Hello there, Chris here from Becker's Models, and as you can see, I've got a nice, lovely Tamiya 148 scale Corsair kit on the bench. Now, you may think, why? Why is this here? Well, some say that modeling is a bit like fine cuisine. Sometimes you need an appetizer, you need something to cleanse the palate from in between those massive main courses. Now, I've got two large projects on top of my bench. I've got a big shelf on top of my bench, which is not a shelf of doom, it's my shelf of big projects, and uh, yeah, I've been squirreling away at them, getting slowly getting things done, a lot of riveting, I'll explain that in another video. But as I said in a video I did a little while ago, I'll put a link up here, uh, Tamiya 148 scale aircraft, World War II, single engine, mm -hmm. they're the best for a first kit, and they're also really good for modelers who are, you know, a bit long in the tooth and want to just do something nice and easy, um, something to just get over, done, even done over a weekend. Now I have a a cunning plan with this one that uh, coincides with kind of like a, I think it's a five year anniversary. I'll have to check that up. I'll I'll make a correction if I'm wrong. Five years or six years. Anyway, about that time ago, I built this, and this is the uh, the Corsair. But this is the uh, not the birdcage. It's the it's the U1A version done in New Zealand colours. So that was one of my first ever in-flight models, one of the first times I've ever made a base. You can see I made a little tropical island sort of base with the uh, the rod, the gym hole at the back there. I just removed the uh, the landing gear at the back and put that rod up the up the bum. And uh, yeah, actually, I think this was one of the first models I put into a competition and I got an award for it. I think I got a bronze or something, I can't remember. And looking back, I'm like, ooh, I wonder why I got that award, because there's a lot of things wrong with this, but I've kept it. It's one of those models that I've, I've actually kept. I throw out most of my models after a while, because I'm not really happy with most of what I've done. But this one, I don't know why I kept it. It's, um, yeah, I, I like the uh, the New Zealand markings, and I like what I've done with it. But, you know, it's a five-year-old. Five years ago, I was only in, I only had done started modeling for about a year or so. And, uh, yeah, so I thought this was pretty good at the time. But I want to do this one again. Instead of doing it, enough, I want to do it in flight, which leads me to the reason that you ever heard that saying, why do one? Because for the price of two, you could do two. Let's do two. This one is the, the 1A version, okay, which means it's got the bubble canopy, raised pilot seat, a few other little foibles. If you're into Corsairs, you'll understand the differences. But this one is one of the Tamiya boxings that most modelers hate because it's got a motor in it. Ooh, it's a toy. Ooh, it can be done in flight. Well, actually, no, it can't even though all Tamiya box art is all misleading. <laughs> They're all designed to be wheels down. But uh, I have had experience with that other one over there. So I'm, what I'm gonna do, put these both in camera, Chris, there you go. I'm gonna build this one in flight with the, with the motor spinning. I'm gonna build this one, the Corsair, the Corsair, they're both bloody Corsairs. I'm gonna build the birdcage wheels down and I may even fold the wings because one of the drawbacks of these kits is the wing fold is a little bit, mm. uh, The only extras I'm gonna add is an uh, Academy or Minicraft clear display stand. So that's a much more elegant and simple solution to that big box that I made. Uh, I've already used that on another model so I know how well it works. And I've got some spare uh, decals, these are for P51s, but I'm just going to use the stencils and and kill markings and so forth on these and I'll mask the actual markings because there's not many markings on Corsairs, just the uh, star and bar on the on the non-bird cage and just the star on the bird cage. So, so let's get started. I've uh, started with the wings on this one because I remember from my old Corsair build and I've, um, online uh, that some people struggle getting these wings just right. Now, I must admit the way that Tamiya has engineered this kit, they've really done it so it's very easy to be posed, wheels down, wings folded. However, wings out, they do have some, where have I thrown them? They do have some, you know, some nice um, parts here to clip the wings together. And what they have you do is to do the, is to build the, the central section first, uh, both sides, I've had another top here, these, these tops, okay, build those ones and then build the outer, the outer wings, clip them together and then glue them in. Unfortunately, you get a weakness here and there is a bit of a wobble and also trying to get that joint just right doesn't seem to work. So what I've done is I've taken a step out of uh, Gary Wickham at ScaleSpot Models. He's got a, it's, this is pretty much a facsimile of the picture I saw on his website, how he built one of these many years ago. And uh, yeah, all I've used is a piece of uh, four mil wide 0.25 uh, styrene stock there to put along along the edges of the lower frame. So that's for the A version. This is the birdcage lower wing. I might just zoom in there. 
Okay, and you can see this, this, this is with the wing on, so this is a very sturdy joint, it's almost like one, one wing, because what I've done of course is I've attached the, where's the part, I've attached the lower wing, okay, I'll turn that over, and you get a beautiful, nice, nice and clean joint there, once that's glued up, and then once that's solidified up, is you put the top brace on, Done as one, done as one wing as well. Is that the right one, Chris? Have I chosen the right one? Oh yes, I have. There we go. Okay. So there's two ways to do that. You can do a full strip that way, or like I've done on the. Here we are. I've done done two two parts here to get a better purchase. Doesn't really matter as long as there's something a surface for it to to attach. It works really well. So I'm happy with this. That's a nice solid joint. That's not going anywhere. Uh, and the the panel. It looks like a looks like a proper proper point there looks fine I haven't won't have to do any sanding at all so that's good because hopefully I'm gonna put some extra rivets on that moving forward with so that's the birdcage one so I've got the um, the wheel wheels are intact but for the A which I'm gonna do wheels up you can see what I've done here is I've done one side with the three doors okay so it's not perfect it's not exactly how I like it but Tamiya are renowned for that 148 scale their doors they fit okay I haven't, haven't had to modify the doors at all it's just, well, apart from cutting off the attachment points and the lugs and shaping a few corners here and there, but I've had to add some reinforcement pieces here on the underside. So yeah, using, again, fairly thin card stock there just to um, get them to sit nice and flush. The way I did it is I temporarily glued the two main doors together like that. And then once that's uh, using a slow setting glue, once that's there, because they're bowed, as you can see, it's not a flat surface, so you can't just glue them flat together. Once that's done there, pre-cut these ones, put them in, glue it in. So I'll do the other side next. And yeah, so that's the wings done. What else have I done? Before I talk about the cockpit, because it's in view, you can see here that white piece of plastic. Uh, on the A, Tamiya has you to, uh, there's a step there that's on the birdcage. Apparently, I'm not sure, not 100% sure, but I filled that in with some uh, proper plastic card and uh, just letting that set overnight. And I'll put some putty on there to make sure it's a proper... A proper fill so that's for the A version. So I've pre-assembled the cockpit. I'm not doing anything different with these ones, uh, I've, even though they're identical. I've got that marked as the A. Um, and moving around, it's just three main pieces. So it's the uh, instrument panel and control stick and rudder. We've got the the side pieces there, and then for the um, for the cockpit for the uh, seat, you can see the major difference there is that one uh, pilot is lower than the other. So even though one of these will be on the ground, I'll still have the, the pilot inside. So that's that done. And then the other thing I've done, because what I want to do, what I like to do when I'm building is to build, get all the parts ready and then prime all the parts at once uh, so I can work on things like propellers, engines, um, missiles or ordnance or whatever while I'm doing other things I don't want to get stalled out. So the other thing I've done is I've completed the engines. And as you can see, there's a slight difference. Let me zoom in. So as you can see there, I've got the, this is the stock engine, which is, in, it's pretty well detailed. It clips together perfectly. Oh, the, as you can see, the, I haven't glued it all together yet. I should glue that on probably. Um, but I won't, I won't actually, because I forgot to put it in the other one. I forgot to put the, uh, the poly cap that goes in there. Let's put that back on. Okay, I'll quickly go through what I've done. So I've detailed up, this is going to be on the flying version, I've detailed it up quite a bit, as you can see. All I've done is using a 0.5mm styrene rod, I've put those feeder tubes in between, let me get a pointy sticky thingy, I'll use my tweezers. Okay, so I've put some, these connectors in between the cylinder heads, which is kind of accurate, you can see them through the cowl, I've decided, I was not going to do it, but then I saw, now you can actually see those quite well. Um, I've, the major one I've done is I've put ignition wires to all 18 cylinders using 0.2 mil lead wire and to make it easier I actually, I don't know if you can see that, they actually come out from underneath the ignition ring not the ignition ring itself which is not the right shape and just to add a bit of detail I used my uh, punch set and I just did some 0.6 mil um, circles there to represent some of the ignition coils coming out added some some bolts on some of the distributor caps or whatever those things are I probably could add another wire going down here, but I just, I've just i run out of sort of mojo to do that. I've added another, using my punch set, uh, a disc that goes there. Yeah, so that's really up the detail. Um, 
and hopefully it'll make it stand out a little bit more than the, the kit one. So that's where I stand at the moment and uh, let's get through next, next update. I should have the interior painted and ready to assemble uh, all the major pieces. Okay, I've got some progress to show you. Let's start with the fuselages, I guess. So I've got the uh, birdcage here and the, the 1A. I've painted the inside of all of them. Uh, probably just need to put a matte coat on them. They're a bit shiny. So that's all basically done. I haven't done any sort of advanced sort of cockpit detailing techniques or anything there. Uh, let's see if I can bring that all the way up. Basically, I just sprayed the correct color and then I've just added some highlights on the ribs and a bit of a shadow using a wash. And just a minor chipping, just done with um, with a sponge chipping technique on the, the birdcage. I've got the doors on. I figured I'll put the doors on now because uh, it looks like the interior of the of the wheel wells is the same as the, the bottom colour. So don't really need to do any masking. And I don't really care if that's the wrong colour. I'm just going to do it that way. <laughs> uh, I've painted the... There's an observation window underneath there. So i just got to put that glass in. So uh, apart from just a little bit, I've done the cleanup. Just... Uh, well, yeah, basically this needs to be primed after I get the fuselage together. With the with the 1A, you can see I've done a bit of a modification there. It's actually a bit wrong. I made those flaps uh, a little bit too wide. Now, let's have a little discussion about flaps. Tamiya, as I said, they all want to make you do this wheels down like that, you know, on the ground. And with the flaps displayed, you know, down, as you can see that this one is already open. I've got the pieces out there over there somewhere anyway. The problem is if you want to do it wheels up, it's not a case of just going, hmm. no. I had to heavily modify almost all the pieces on the inside there. They're not shaped correctly to go to go flaps up. You have to get, make sure that there's the right gap all the way along here, okay? Uh, and also that they all line up this way as well. I've got an almost there. I sort of gave up after a while. It's just too much bloody work. Anyway, the other thing, and I didn't do it on my New Zealand one five years ago, is once you've put the flaps in, uh, there is a gap and you have to fill it up because the, these doors actually come up to fill to fill that gap between the the, the, the wing and the, the flap itself. So I just used a bit of styrene stock there and I didn't realise until I was almost finished that I made that, that stock is too wide. So if I ever do this again, I'll make it a bit narrower. But um, hopefully on the 132s, which I'm dying to get to, they don't do the same thing. So the, uh, the doors are closed and they're not too bad. There's just a couple of little minor gaps here and there, but they're flush, they're good enough. Uh, I'm fairly happy with that. Let's have a look at what I've done to the cockpit. So the internals, I've uh, painted all these, painted them all in the, uh, in the green. I can't remember what colors I used actually. And I think the initial color I used was wrong. So I mixed up a, a new batch and I did some hairspray chipping and I've done a little bit of chipping here and there, but it's, it doesn't really show up. You can see some here on the, on the bottom of the rudder pedals. Uh, what to say about this? Well, cause I'm trying to do this as quickly as possible. I just did this all by hand, no masking, nothing else. I think they came up. Okay. Just, just a, a basic sort of, hopefully that's focusing. Okay. So I've just used a bit of highlights there, a little bit of dry brushing just to get the, and a little bit of, uh, chipping along the edges just to get them to work. A lot of this isn't going to be seen, so I went went pretty quickly uh, with the um, the pilots. The mo the molding on because I remember that the molding on the faces isn't the best with Tamir, and I'm not the best figure painter in the world. I just did some basic highlights and I added too dark a wash there, but you know whatever. It looks all right. Added a bit of future to the to the goggles, and I might do a little bit more weathering on the. Oh, in camera, Chris. Might do a little bit more weathering on the um, the headrest there. And I think on this chap, yeah, his face is really bad. Is that in focus? Hopefully, I need to put my other glasses on. I can't see anything. <laughs> Let's try a bit closer. How's that? Okay, his face is not that good. I tried a technique where I did an enamel wash first and then I did acrylics over the top and it was rubbish. So I'm not gonna do that again. Now with the uh, instrument panels, okay. I was going to use the decals, but I figured, no, nah, I'm just going to get into it. So you can see there's a little bit of gloss there on the on the dials. I just hand painted the dials. They look all right. Okay. They did the job. And all I did is I just hit uh, using a, a light gray. I just highlighted the rims of all the of all the dials. And then I added a little bit of, I think that's actually Tamiya X22. See the, see the glare? Just some gloss into the dials. And, you know, that's that. There's a little bit of chipping here and there, which you're not going to see anyway. And I think on one of them, I did a little bit more extra dry brushing, but you know, basically it's the same with, with that one as well. Hopefully that's in focus. 
All right, so these should um, go into the fuselage pretty quickly, so I'm going to do that and just put them all together. But before we go, and I might wrap this um, update up here, and we might just zoom in. Let's have a look if I can zoom in. Do, 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 do. All right, here are the engines. Okay, so they've come out quite nicely. I don't think they don't look too bad. Oh, look at that. I forgot to paint the whatever these are, the top of the engine case. I'll just leave it as that. I think that looks looks alright. These one I've done black. So this is the, the stock engine. Okay, I've just detailed up. Uh, sorry, I haven't detailed up. That's just, just painted, just straight paint. I think that's uh, MRP silver and aluminium with some Tamiya enamel wash into the cylinder heads and just some life colour black and, and blue there. And then on the uh, the detailed up one, where I've added the ignition wires, painted them in uh, like a desert yellow. Then I just added a brown wash and then on the cylinders and all those feeder tubes in between the heads, just with different blacks and greys. So I think that's come out okay. And uh, yeah, I'll just might leave it at that and uh, move on to getting. Hang on, now that's not painted, but this one is. I've got to, uh, I've got to paint these exhausts on the other one because the cow flap's going to be open. So I need to paint that next. But anyway, I'll put these aside for now and get on to assembling the um, the Corsairs. So see you next time.